little over three months ago, I started a new version of my game that I'm currently calling Project TRS. I've made a few devlogs about this game, but I've realized I've never actually done a full overview of what the game is, so in this video, I'll do just that, and I'll go over my last three months of progress. So about a year ago, which is actually crazy, I can't believe it's been a year, I released a demo of this game that was basically just a small vertical slice of the combat. In general, the response to it was really positive, and if you played that demo and have been watching my videos for a year now, thank you. Anyway, I released the demo and then just, like, goofed off for a whole year apparently. I worked on another game and then ended up cancelling it, I did a game jam, I traveled a lot. Whatever, it doesn't matter because three months ago I started a fresh project and began working on this game again in earnest. And I feel like the progress has been really good. But first, let's talk about what the idea for the game even is. So I'm calling the game Project TRS, which is just a working title until I come up with something better. TRS stands for Tower Defense RPG Sim. The very basic idea of the game is Stardew Valley meets Mountain Blade, with tower defense style battles. That's kind of a vague description I know, so let me take you through my vision for the game with a terrible PowerPoint presentation. Keep in mind this is just to get the point across, and it's all subject to change. In Project TRS, you'll play as a hero who's been tasked with defending the land against an evil, invading army of skeletons. You'll do this by traveling around to different towns, helping the villagers, improving town defenses, and defending the town yourself in tower defense style battles. The game is broken up into kind of three distinct sections, towns, battles, and the world map. In towns, you'll be able to explore the surrounding area, talk to townspeople, complete quests, etc. This is kind of the life sim portion of the game because you'll be able to give gifts to people and develop relationships with certain townspeople. When the invading skeletons attack, you'll have to defend it. These battles are the tower defense portion of the game. The demo I created a year ago was to prototype this combat system. The combat in the new version of the game will look and feel pretty different from the demo, but it gets the point across. By the way, it's still available on itch if you're curious. The final portion of the game is the world map. My idea for this is that the world map will sort of look like a map of a strategy game where you'll see the enemy skeleton units and you'll see different towns. This is sort of a rough mock-up I made to get the point across. Traveling in the game will take time, for you and the skeletons. So if you want to travel to a different town, it'll take a certain amount of days and during that time the skeletons will travel as well. So if a skeleton force is heading to one of your towns, you may not be able to get there in time and you'll just have to hope the town can defend it itself. Or you may have to choose between two towns that are about to be attacked because you don't have time to get to both. The game will also have a calendar system, so as you're traveling around or helping townspeople or whatever, the seasons will pass and in-game events will happen. I really like the idea of traveling taking time because it gives it some weight. If you want to spend a week adventuring into the unknown and try to find some treasure or something, you'll have to weigh that against the possibility of one of your towns getting attacked or missing an event or something. Something. All that being said, I don't intend for this game to be super punishing or difficult. There's not going to be a real failure state. While you can lose towns to the skeletons, you can always get them back, and there won't ever be a point in which you've completely lost and have to reload your save or something. I actually thought about this a lot, and I think for the game I'm making, it's a better idea to bake failure into the narrative, instead of failure meaning you have to reload a save or restart. What this basically means is that if you quote unquote fail and lose all your towns or something, that's not game over, it's just a setback, and you can always come back from it. No important NPCs will ever die permanently and there will never be any real permanent consequences. This may sound sort of weird, but I have to admit something pretty embarrassing. I'm a save scummer. If I lose a main NPC or I make a terrible decision in a game, I'll reload my save and do the right thing, or even worse, I may look up a guide. This has definitely made certain game experiences worse for me, but I just can't help it. There's something inside me that wants that perfect experience of the game. So in an attempt to avoid all that in my game, I want failure to be a part of the process rather than something that might ruin your campaign. You don't reload your save in Dark Souls when you die because dying is inherently part of the game. I want you to keep playing through the failure and get the experience of a heroic comeback rather than feel like you have to restart because you messed up. Now I don't think this is necessarily the best design choice for every game, but for the game I'm making and the vibe I'm going for, I think it's the best way to do it. So there we go. There's obviously going to be a lot of smaller features I didn't talk about, but that's a general overview of the game. And now that I've told you what the game is about, let's talk about what I've done so far. The first thing I did was to define the acceptance criteria for the initial demo of the game. What's very funny, at least to me, is that I fished out this document while writing the script for this video, and I realized I had already gone out of scope for the initial demo I had planned. 
Anyway, I wanted to tackle features in order of the most unknown to the least unknown. Basically, I wanted to do the things that I was least sure I could do first so that I could assess how feasible the whole project would be. Since I'd already built the combat system a year ago, I wasn't at all worried about that. My biggest worries were the NPCs and all that goes into that, like quests, dialogue, persistence, etc. And I guess like tooling? Basically, can I get the tile map system set up in a way that's comfortable for me? Can I get the dialogue system set up in a way that's easy to write? That kind of stuff. In the past, this has been something that has really messed me up in terms of finishing projects because I get so bogged down in the bad tooling that the actual creation part just grinds to a halt. So I was really hoping to set up a solid foundation early on so that this didn't happen. First couple weeks or so was really about that second thing. I hooked up a couple of plugins I've talked about in previous videos. I organized the assets I was using so it'd be easier to implement them. Actually, this is kind of a cool thing I want to show off that wasn't super complicated to set up but makes things easier and it's just kind of neat. In the engine I created this human body scene that's actually a tool script so that I can update the look of the character in the editor and it updates in real time. All the animations are set up as well so if I need a human I have all the art handled in one scene. There's some issues with the way I edited the art for example the skin tones get kind of messed up with the hair but that's something that's easy to fix and won't require additional work in the engine. That's the kind of stuff I really wanted to get set up first, just to make my life easier. I also built the general game stuff in the first couple weeks, like the camera system with camera limits, the level system and level transition system, so that when you walk through a door to a new level, it fades in and out. I also built a really simple time system. After I felt like I had the bare bones of a top-down game in place, I started working on the inventory. I know that it seems weird to do so early, but again, I was working in terms of most unknown to least unknown things, and I'd never really built a full inventory system in Godot, so I wanted to make sure that it was solid since I knew a lot of future systems would depend upon it. For an inventory system, I needed items too. And I did another cool thing with the item node. Since I'm using Pandora, all my items are defined as entities in the Pandora system, and I made a tool script so that when I select an item, it updates the art in real time, which is very convenient. The inventory system is functional, but maybe not ideal. I had drag and drop working, but decided to remove it to simplify some stuff later. But I may add it back in if it ends up being annoying without it. I'm currently just going for an MVP, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time on drag and drop. After I had an inventory system, I could start what I call the give system. This is basically just the system that allows you to give items to NPCs, whether it's to complete a quest or as a gift when I eventually build the gifting system. The give system is a big system and the code is pretty complicated, but the idea is fairly simple. It's pretty much just a menu where there are slots that accept a certain amount of a certain item, and if you click that item in your inventory, it'll transfer that item to the give menu slot. Then if you click accept, the item basically just disappears and the menu tells the NPC that that item has been given. Since I don't really have the functionality to give NPCs gifts yet, the give menu is solely for completing quests. Speaking of quests, the next thing I did was the quest system. Again, the code for the quest system is complicated, but the idea is simple. Every day, if your quest log isn't full, you're given a random quest from the bank of quests. The quests are all really simple right now and just consist of gathering some items and giving those items to someone. This will be extended in the future to include different types of quests as well. I've talked about how the code in my game is complicated, and if you're interested in learning more about coding and problem solving in general, check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the place where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant's approach to learning is uniquely effective. Instead of just memorizing a bunch of facts, you actually learn by doing. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts, which has proven to be way more effective than just watching lecture videos. Learning a little bit every day is the best way to do it, and Brilliant makes that easy by helping you develop a learning habit. Instead of just mindlessly scrolling, you can learn on the go via the Brilliant app on your phone. Brilliant has awesome courses on programming and data analysis to learn to analyze trends and think like a programmer. They also have courses on machine learning and LLMs, so you can learn about the underlying technology of ChatGBT. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash develops or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now at this point, I had been working on the game for a little under two months. The next month of development was entirely devoted to NPC schedules. Now remember how I said earlier that after fishing out my design doc, I had realized I'd overscoped already? 
This is where I overscoped. In the design doc, I said that the NPCs just needed to wander around randomly for the MVP. Instead, I spent a month building NPC schedules with a whole navigation system that operates in the background so that NPCs can navigate between scenes when the scenes aren't loaded. I even think I said in my last devlog that I wasn't going to worry about the inner scene navigation, and then I did it anyways. However, now I have a pretty robust NPC schedule system, which I think will add a lot to the game. Anyway, that's pretty much all of it. Three months of working on my game, and honestly, I'm I'm really happy with the progress. I feel like I'm moving pretty fast despite being super busy with my full-time job and travel. The next thing I'm going to do is combat, which I think will be really fun. Hopefully the next devlog will be how I created the perfect combat system for my game and how it was super easy. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe and all of that and yeah, see you next time.